Hi there and welcome to Transcona Trailer Sales. Today we'll be walking you through your 2025 Wildwood Platinum 178BHSKX. We're just going to start off at the back of the unit. If you notice up top, you are pre-wired for an observation camera, as well as a mount for a Lippert stair system. If you'd like to get set up with either of those, you can contact our parts department and they can put together a quote for you. You have your spare tire located in the back here, and then I'm just on the back left side here. If you pull this cap off, this would be where you can keep your sewer hose, that way it's out of the unit, not causing any smell inside there. We currently have a brand new one in the front compartment, which I will show you in a minute. In this corner, as well as all four corners of the unit, you got stabilizer jacks. The way those works is you're just gonna hook you up with your three quarter inch tool, which is inside the front compartment as well. Once this foot touches the ground, just give me another eighth quarter turn. And it's gonna take any bouncer sway you see we have in the unit right now away. A little further to your left, you do have your city water connections. If you're at a site of service, you can throw a garden hose in there, turn it on, it's gonna pressurize all the lines without the needing to run your water pump. You also have your black tank flush. If you thread a garden hose in there with your black tank, with the sewer connected and the tank open, turn the garden hose on. It's just gonna rinse out that tank, keeping things that a little bit cleaner and helping with false, false monitor panel readings. And then to your left, you've got your 30 amp twist lock connection. If you're just pulling that guy off, you're just gonna take note of that notch there. It's gonna line up this notch on this side. You just line those guys up, pushing it into place. Eighth turn to lock it down. And then you got that threaded collar to really lock it down. If you follow that cord back, you do have your standard 30 amp plug-in. Most campsites should have this and you can plug right on in, but let's say you have the unit at home and you want to run your fridge or your site only has 15 amp service, you do include a 15 amp park adapter. Just keep in mind you're going down to 15 amps power so you won't be able to run something like your air conditioner on that. It's really just to run your fridge and your lights. Whenever you do plug it in, you got a blue and a red light. If the red light's on, it's a bad power source, so that would be where I would be looking. If the blue light's on, it's telling you you have a good power source. And then you get to your sewer outlet. You got two valves, you got your black and your gray. You're always gonna to wanna to empty your black first. This is gonna be your dirtiest water and then you can come behind that with your gray, which is typically a little cleaner water, filled from your sinks and your showers, taking that, twisting that off. You got those two ears there. Those are gonna be the same two ears your sewer hose has. You just line those guys up with those notches, twist it and locks into place. And then over here, you do just have your two low point drains. You got a hot and a cold line. Loosen those caps off drain all the, line, all the water inside the lines. It just helps from keeping water from going stale or stagnant. Or if you're working on a faucet or something like that, it just helps to cause less water inside the unit. Near the front here, you do have this storage compartment. The front of the unit, you do have these nice accent lights right up front, which I'll show you the switch for inside. You got your battery disconnect on this back frame here with the battery disconnect on like it is now the batteries are connected to the unit if you were to turn that battery disconnect switch to off and pull it out the batteries become disconnected from the unit inside this box here is where you house your battery and then you got your propane tank right at the front here the only thing you're really gonna have to worry about is counterclockwise opens that guy up all the way opens up the flow of propane to the unit if you wanted to take this tank out you do just have a little wing nut here to loosen off Loosen that guy off all the way. Take this strap off, it'll allow you to take this tank right off. Then you got your tongue jack right up front. A little light switch for if you're docking at night. And then you got up and you have down. And then you do have a little manual override right at the top here. There's a little tool located in the front compartment. You can hook it up to that drive nut. It'll allow you to manually operate that jack in case you were to have it fail for whatever reason. Opening up this compartment. This is where you're gonna find that starter pack comes included sewer hose and a few other goodies as well as that 50 amp park adapter and then you just have the two tools here you got the one tool for the tug jack override and then you got your uh, stabilizer jack tool it's going to be at the front side there you get your fresh water connection so stick a garden hose in there, turn it on. That's gonna fill your fresh tank and that's what your water pump draws off of. The drain for that tank is right here. It's just this little cap, pulling this cap off would allow that drain tank to start draining. Your furnace exhaust is right here. Whenever your furnace is on, this can be blowing out hot air. So just be mindful of that. Then you do get to your main suburban water heater. Power switch is just right here. Turning that power switch on supplies power to the thermostat inside. And then you do have a pressure relief valve right down there in the right hand corner. One thing I'm gonna mention for these tankless water heater systems, it's not like your traditional type. You are 
You aren't going to bypass it for winterization. You are just gonna run antifreeze through it with it off, of course. And then once you're done doing all that, just cracking this pressure relief valve and leaving it cracked open so that it'll allow that antifreeze to escape as it expands. You got your exterior shower, which does just open with your standard 731 key. Should come through with your unit inside the binder. And then opening up this guy, last but not least, you do have a 110 mini fridge, so this will work whenever it's plugged into shore power. USB plug into the wall here, and then you do got your little capital grill. You got your little uh, safety latch. Popping that guy open will allow you to slide that out. And then you can lock that guy down. You got another one right back here just for the propane connection, sliding that over. And then you got your propane hose, taking the dust cap off of both ends. You're gonna take this one and run it down this way. And this one just works like your standard airline. You're just pulling that collar back, pushing it on, and it'll lock it into place. And then this guy will just run down underneath here and connect to this guy with this valve closed like it is now. The flow of propane is closed, so it'll allow you to operate this coupler. If you were to turn that on, it opens the flow of propane, and as an added safety measure, you can't operate the coupler. So the closed, push, lock it into place. You can open up that flow of propane, and then you just come to your griddle, let it prime for a second, because if the propane's off, it can take a few minutes to get all the air out of the lines, and you click it over, and it fires right on up. To get inside the unit, you are just taking that assist handle, pushing it up, folding it 90 degrees, and it'll lock into place. That'll allow you to open up your door, get those stairs down. You do have to have your door all the way open, and that'll allow you to fold those stairs down, just pulling that blue latch. That'll unlock them. You've got adjustable feet, just with these uh, silk tabs here. Locks into these channels, so you can have nice level feet at your campsite. One thing I'm gonna note right now with this door is if you go to run the awning, just taking note that if the door is all the way open, it's gonna contact with that awning arm, which could cause damage if you don't notice it. So always making sure that door is 90 degrees, allowing that arm to come out nice and easy when you're using it. Taking a step on inside, fire extinguisher off on your left, just like home, pull the pin and shoot. Up on the wall, you got a light switch here, turning those on does turn on the main living space lights. Turning this one on does turn on an awning LED right outside here. And you got a water pump switch, turning that on, turns on the water, turns on your water pump, which draws out of your fresh tank. And then you just got your monitor panel to read all your tanks. Hitting this button up allows that awning to start making its way out. Once fully extended, you're gonna see the back of the metal tube and the little flap hang down. Once you get to about five, five to 10 kilometer an hour winds, you are gonna to wanna to be thinking about bringing that awning in as you do run the risk of bending your arm or ripping your fabric. And there you go, you got that little flap that hangs down and then the back of that metal tube. Now if we're to start raining, you can take any arm front or rear. You're gonna notice these plastic tabs right up top. So you pinch those guys in and you would pull this, pull this arm down, allowing it to change the pitch of the awning head, allowing water to then run off. Now, if you like that angle better, you can do the same thing with the front arm and it's gonna allow for more shade underneath. Just always making sure you do release those guys back to their normal state before you bring that awning in. And to bring the awning in, you're just pushing that button down. The awning can make its way in. And once it contacts the side of the trailer, the motors will just cut out. To get that slide out to work, you're just pushing and holding that down button. Slide it's gonna start making its way out. Always making sure you're aware of what's both on both sides of the slide before you operate it. That way you don't run the risk of damaging anything. Once that slide's fully extended, you just can hear the motors cut out. And there you go. So in your main bed space, you do have this couch. To get that couch down, you're just taking it and pulling it. Pushing and pulling it will allow it to fold down. Then you can fold your mattress down. Once that folds it down, you can push it into place. You've got a window, great nice window, with the shade right up front. All the blinds in it do work in the same way. They just kind of sit where you leave them. Both sides do have sleep app access, and you have plugins on both sides of the bed as well. And then to get that bed to fold back in, 
you are just having to fold it up like so. Flip it back into place. You can grab the foot of your couch and fold that. You have a sleeping space again. This light right here does just control those accent lights up front, which I showed you earlier. You got your main stereo system, which is just this nice JBL speaker right on the wall here. It's nice because you could just pick it up and take it where you want to go and then put it back in its dock for whenever you want it inside here. You got your solar controller on the wall. It is just really a monitor panel system. So it's going to tell you your charging, uh, your battery temperature, your char your, what your current battery voltage is, what your amp hour usage is, and what you're charging at. And then you got a USB plug in below that. In the kitchen area, you got your range hood, which I do recommend running whenever you're using this stove. And talking about that, there is a little flap right outside the door here. Always make sure whenever you first get your campsite, you got that flap opened up so that you can evacuate those fumes. And whenever you're traveling, just locking that into place. That way you don't get any excess dust inside the unit. Flipping this guy back, this does run off propane. So be mindful of that. And you do got glass here, but you're just taking that, pushing it over to the light and it'll fire right on up. I did have the propane system running earlier and that's why it fired up so fast. Sometimes it can take a few minutes you've had the propane system off for a while to clear all the air out of the lines so just be mindful of that light switch here does turn on these nice illuminations on the handles got your microwave right up top not much i'm going to show you there some storage space above it that is also the main control panel for your slide out on the wall here you got your suburban thermostat for your water heater pushing that button once turns it on going up or down at any time change temperature you got celsius and fahrenheit button when you first get to your unit it's going to be locked at 50 degrees celsius and it won't allow you to go anymore it's just a safety feature so kids don't burn their hands but if you push and hold the up button for about five seconds it'll unlock it and it'll allow you to go to 55. storage all down below you got your main furnace output. This is going to be where the furnace puts out all its air. So if you want to get a little fan just to move the air around a little bit, it'd be good to do so. And then we got an LP detector right here on the ground. If this guy ever starts going off, you are just going to want to turn off the main supply of propane at the front of the unit and just open up some windows just to ventilate it out a little bit. You got your dinette area, which is set up for a table right now. If you'd like to set up into a bed, it's got these like bicycle seat like little handles here just loosen them off and that allows it would allow the table to come out of its base it's just a little and it would pop out and then you could just set that tabletop on these ledges here and this also has an, another little bicycle style clamp so you can lift this right out of its base as well to move it out of the way and then to get it back in, you're just lining it back up, clamping it back into place. Sometimes you got to adjust it a little bit just to make sure it's tight. And it's locked back into place. Storage underneath as well. Lights on their own center push buttons. You got a little TV mount here. So if you got your own TV, it does come with this little mount or you could take this off the wall because there is a backer behind here to put your own mount on you got your cable satellite outlets right here whatever this green light on green light is on it's turning the antenna on on the roof that also improves radio frequency so i do recommend leaving it on but you just push that button to turn it off you got your thermostat for your furnace down below here with it the way it is it's off clicking it all the way to the right is as hot as setting anywhere in the middle is warmer cooler and then just all the way to the left to click it off whenever you do turn it off the furnace runs for about three minutes just as an added safety feature to cool down controls for your air conditioner right up here you got a few different types of louver options you can close and open so you can move the air around how you'd like and then the controls are just right here it's going to show a hot that's for if this was equipped to the heat pump this one isn't it is just equipped with an air conditioner so turning that once you're going to get onto low fan one more time, you get to medium fan. Now this is just the air conditioner moving air around. There's no actual cooling involved. High fan. And then you get to the blue 
The blue fan is when the air conditioner takes into effect. You got two filters right underneath here. You're just having to pull these tabs. They'll pop right out. It'll allow you to slide those filters out of the way so you can give them a blow off with like an air gun. Sometimes they do get a little dusty. You got your bunk space here. Top and bottom bunk both have lights and USB plugins. They also have windows. They're just your standard type of window where you got to flick it up and it'll allow you to open that up. Blinds are just velcroed shut. Taking a step into the bathroom. You got your light switch right on the wall here above the plug-in. This is going to be your main GFI plug-in. You got test on the bottom, reset in the middle. Whenever you have your, this green light on, it's telling you you have a successful power source. So if you ever have an outlet that doesn't work, this would be the first place I'd check. You do have storage underneath, as well as in the medicine cabinet, hot and cold water at both taps for the sink and shower. You got your toilet features on the right. And then one more thing I'll mention for the bunk areas is if you do pull this mattress out of the way or flip it over it and bend it, you can lift this guy right open in case you need some extra storage space for bikes or whatever else. And then come into your refrigerator, opening this guy up, you got your freezer and your fridge. You're gonna notice right up here, you got your settings, obviously with it all the way to the right, it's gonna be as cold as settings. If you do wanna run it while you're traveling, you do have to make sure that you have this over in the off grid section. Otherwise it's not gonna work when you're plugged into 12 volt, it's just gonna stay off. So just be mindful of that. And then just all the way to the left to turn it right off. And then right down below that, you got your main circuit breaker fuse panel, popping that guy open. Whenever a breaker trips, it's gonna sit in the middle, so you do just have to turn it off and then back on again to reset it. Whenever you have a fuse blow, there'll be a little red indicator light letting you know which one's blown. Then right next to it, if you pull these two screws out, it's just gonna give you access to that water pump for winterization. That's gonna be it for this unit here. If you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call.